Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm a geologist. I make videos about geology, studying and hiking. Today I wanted to talk about what do did I carry in my geology field backpack? What did I bring with me to my geology field trips? Now in my geology career I had to take multiple field courses of different difficulty and at university we were required to take three or four geology field courses. Now keep in mind what I'm going to show you today is only uh, is what I took for day trips. What that means? That means the field course, usually the field courses I would take would last 10 days long and the day trip uh, courses would be, would mean that we would leave the house or a hotel in the morning, early 6 a.m., 5 a.m. and come back in the evening. So the trip would be only during the day. So this is what I'm going to show you today, the setup for that type of trips. For overnight trips, overnight camping and overnight geology trips my setup was quite different as you can imagine you have to carry much more gear with you so that would be a separate video so with that let's begin so first thing is the backpack itself now this back is the, this backpack is over 10 years old. I bought it when I had to take my very first geology field trip. Uh, I was v a very poor student and this is the very first purchase I did um, from a local company called Mountain Equipment Co-op. It's a Canadian company and they make uh, hiking and outdoor equipment of really good quality for a very affordable price and that's why I got it at the time. The reason I chose this backpack because it has a really nice back support, very thick uh, wide straps as well as a hip strap which gives you a lot of support and it's very comfortable to carry. First, as you can see, the most important part of any geologist is the geology hammer. We were required to carry this on all of our field courses at university so this is where it would live. I would just dangle and then I would pull it out if I needed to. Also water bottle. I would always carry it in the side pocket for quick access. Another very important thing where I'm uh, where I'm from is bear spray. Now this you might have to carry or you might not depending where you live. Uh, where I live I'm from Canada and most of my uh, university field courses were in were done in Rocky Mountains and Rocky Mountains is a bear territory. We have brown bears, black bears, grizzly bears. And the only thing to protect yourself from the bears is bear spray is basically like pepper spray on steroids. That's how I imagine it. Now the other thing, so this backpack has a hidden front pocket and in that pocket I would carry all my geology related items that I needed for the actual work in the field. So I would always carry two field notebooks that are weather, like all weather journals. So if they get wet, they don't get destroyed. The reason I carried two is because I found that one is not enough. I would take a lot of notes during my field courses. Also hand lens. I think every geologist has a hand lens. It's a must. Um, also our university provided us with, uh, with a list of what we should be carrying on a field trip. And then anything extra was like up to your discretion. Another thing I carried is the small pencil case with a grain card and couple pencils, a pen, a magnetic pen and couple uh, colored pencils. So a color pencil and a highlighter. That's because when you are mapping, it's nice to have different colors. So it's not all in pencil um, that you can like mark important things. Now, in addition to all of this geology gear, we also were given by university a brand and compass. And if you don't know what that is, I'm going to insert a picture here. It's basically a geolo geology compass that would al that allows you to measure strike and dip and orientation of the rock. Now the front pocket, which is also a very quickly accessed on this backpack is here. In this pocket, I would carry items that I needed more often during a field trip. One of which uh, was wet wipes. Um, I would always also carry a small roll of toilet paper, which I don't have right now, but that's a must if you are away in the wild. Uh, small hand sanitizer, again, for same reason to clean your hands. Uh, small hand cream. Now I get my skin gets so dry when I'm out in the mountains. We have a very, very dry climate here. Our humidity is like 20%. So 
to me a hand cream is a must uh, another thing I have to carry always is a lip balm with an SPF of at least 30. If I am exposed to high UV or like high sun, I always get cold sores on my lips if they're not protected. So the lip balm with high SPF is a must for me as well. And I also get very dry lips as well. So this, I like that. Another thing I have here is the whistle, which is a little random, but our school provided us every student with a whistle now first it was obviously to uh, if you do get separated from the group um, it's to alert that you're here and they can find you um, but it also can be used to deter wildlife from you normally bears cougars moose deers they're quite scared of unfamiliar noises and um, so a whistle potentially if they're not actively attacking you if they're just kind of passing by and you want to scare them away a whistle might be a good idea uh, but our school gave us one each and in this pocket i would also carry snacks that i would eat uh, aside from my normal lunch so like a granola bar something sugary when you're walking a lot and you're not stopping something quick that you can snack on on the other side of this there's another pocket and in this pocket i would carry my first aid and kind of survival items that would rarely get used, but nevertheless are probably the most crucial. Now for field courses that I took, there's usually a professor that teaches the course and leads the group. Uh, there was also a teaching assistant that would help the professor and help the students and a group of students of 10 to 12 people. Now the, during our field courses, we would never get separated. Uh, if we had to traverse and spread out, we would always go in groups of two or three students. So there's nothing, nothing goes wrong. Or if it does, you have someone there to help you. Now, keep in mind, professor, so our professors or teachers always had extra gear with them. So they would always carry a satellite radio so that they can radio for help in the areas where there was no cell reception. They would also have a very comprehensive first aid kit if something got injured. Uh, they would have knowledge of how to help you in different situations. So if something went wrong, and there were a couple times, which is a different video, that things did go wrong and the professor was able to take charge and resolve the situation. But do not rely on anyone but yourself in the situation you get separated, get lost. The only person that can help you is you. So you always must be prepared for unexpected, especially if you're going to to the wild nature essentially away from everyone. So in this pocket, I have a little pouch with band-aids. Now, even if I don't care if you have the best shoes in the world, the hiking shoes, if you're walking for 10 to 12 hours a day, climbing rocks, uh, traversing, chances are you will get a blister. So band-aids is a must. It's not fun to walk for 10 hours when you have a huge blister on your foot. Next thing here I have is a rescue sheet. Now, as you can see, it's still sealed in its original package, so I've never had to use it. Thank God, that's a good thing. But what the rescue sheet is, is basically, that's exactly what that is. It's a reflective blanket that keeps you warm, keeps you warm but it's also reflective. So it, if you have to have a helicopter search, like searching for you, they can spot you more like easier in the bush than if you just say like in a black, shirt like I am right now. I would highly recommend to have it. It's very small and doesn't take a lot of space and doesn't weight anything. Next thing I have here are is Tylenol, which I do get headaches. So uh, Tylenol is a must for me and also Pepto-Bismol. Not a lot of people suggest to have it with you, but I can tell you if you have stomach issues, for some reason you have indigestion and you're 10 hours away from civilization, up in a forest, um, and there's a group of 12 people waiting for you, it's not fun to have problems with your stomach. So Pepto-Bismol is also a must in my book. Next thing I have is bug spray. Where we are, again, there's a lot of ticks, there's a lot of mosquitoes. So it's very nice to have this to save you from the bites. I also have a uh, flashlight here. Again, if you do get separated from the group and it's starting to get dark, it's always nice to have a flashlight. Flashlight batteries last longer than cell phone batteries, so it's better to have a flashlight. Um, and I have a multi-tool 
thingy. I don't know what's the actual name for it, but it has like knife and other tools in it, which can come in handy. And the last thing I have here is the lighter in case you have to make fire and keep yourself warm. Um, some sort of means to, to ignite fire, either it's matches or a lighter or something of that sort would be very useful as well. So that's this pocket. Again, items in this pocket don't get used very often, but if they do, uh, it's usually because you really have to need them. Finally, the main pocket of this backpack. First thing here I have is clipboard, which sounds really weird, looks really bulky to carry, but is absolutely a lifesaver when you're doing a geology field course. In geology field courses, chances are you will be required to do some sort of mapping. And for our field courses, we would be say given a basic topography map on which we would have to mark our traverse, we would have to mark directions and uh, the size of the outcrops and put some measurements. Now, if you're given like a large paper map that you're trying to write on in a field, it is really very uncomfortable to do it. Most people try to do it on their backpack, but it's the map is, it tears, it gets destroyed. So I found a clipboard is the best way to kind of solve this problem. I like the folded uh, clipboard because I can store all my maps here and then if I need one I can pull it out put it here and do my notes so I recommend next thing here I have is a pair of socks a vanek I always carry extra pair of socks in case your feet do get wet which they often do if it's raining um, it's nice to have an extra pair of dry socks I also have an extra layer of thermal um, shirt normally we would leave uh, at like 6 or 5 a.m. when it's chilly so I would wear this on top of my t-shirt and then by noon when it gets really warm I would take this off and just be in my t-shirt another thing here is my rain rain jacket now in on the days where the forecast would tell me there's zero percent of chance of rain this is the jacket I would bring with me because in the mountains, 0% of chance of rain on a forecast still means that could be rain and learn from experience. But if there's very like little chance of rain, this is the rain jacket I would bring. If the forecast showed that it would be raining all day and for our field courses, we would go rain or shine unless it's absolutely like impossible weather but if it's just drizzling all day we would still go so for those days i would bring a proper rain gear which is uh, my raincoat and pants that you put over your clothing the reason i don't bring this rain gear all the time with me is because it's quite bulky takes a lot of space it does it add weight and is quite unnecessary if it's not raining so on Warmer days, this jacket is enough. On really rainy, cold days, this is what I would bring. And last thing here I have is sunscreen. Now I am very fair skinned, so I burn to a crisp. And if you're up high in the mountains, even if it's a cloudy day, you still get burnt. The, the UV uh, radiation is really high. So sunscreen, normally I wouldn't carry such large tube with me. I would buy like a half size so I don't have to lag this, but this one is half empty. So this is what I'm carrying with me right now. Now, back when I started taking field courses, we only had flip phone phones. So a cell phone wasn't really big necessity. And a lot of the times there's really no subtle, there's no reception. So, but I never carried a camera with me. And I, like I said, I, I didn't really have a lot of money, so I couldn't buy me a camera. And I regret this because I don't have a lot of record of my like very first field trips. Further down when I started working, I bought myself my first DSLR and carried it everywhere. So I have a lot of documentation of my field courses, but the very first ones at school, I really don't have any record of them as far as photos. And I really wish I did. So I do recommend you either carry a camera with you or now the smartphones do fantastic job of photos and video. So I do recommend you carry that with you so you can take photos and video. Now, now that I hike, uh, I do bring my cell phone and I also bring a power pa um, pack or like power, I don't know what you call it, like 
the power thing to charge my cell phone because the cell phone does lose power quite quickly, especially if you're doing video. Uh, so that's a must as well. Now, the last thing I would also carry is lunch, but for us, uh, if uh, say we would stay, we would be staying in hotel overnight, uh, lunch would be prov provided to us by um, school contracting local like fast foods or restaurants. They would pack lunches for us that we would pick up in the morning. Or if I had to, like if I would go from my house to the field trip, then I would pack my own lunch, usually just a sandwich and a couple snacks. So nothing elaborate. So hopefully this sort of gave you an idea where to start to pack for your day trip. I will add a list, a checklist at the bottom that you can follow. Again, don't take it as a must, like as a, this is what I'm taking, that's it. You have to make a decision for your, this is just what I took, but that doesn't mean that would work for everyone. You have to decide what is important for you, what you have to take and as especially on your surroundings, right? So if for us, if I'm going in the summer, I would bring this in the winter, it would be slightly different setup. And uh, hopefully you like this video, hopefully gave you some ideas where to start to pack for your field course. Um, if you are going on your very first field trip soon, comment below, I would love to know where you're going, as well as if you like hiking and would like to be a part of our like sort of group that I created. I created a group on Facebook called Hiking with Purpose. If you don't know what it's about, I'm gonna link a video below where I started the hiking challenge. If you're interested in participating in hiking challenge, I highly encourage you to join that Facebook group. And the purpose of that group is to unite people from all over the world, from different walks of life, with different experience levels, to and just unite those people with the love of outdoors and love of hiking. So I don't care what exp how experienced you are. I don't care how ha like how often do you go, go hiking and where you go hiking. All I care is that you love outdoors and would love to share that experience with others. So if you if that sounds like you, please join that group. You can also find me on Instagram at Girl for really nice mountain view pictures and my hiking adventures and I would love uh, to hear from you and hopefully you like this video and I will see you in a week. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.